Hello students. Um, so after today's class, I went digging back into Excel and I figured out what went wrong with us doing a histogram. So that was the first good development after class and I'm sorry um, for any confusion that caused, um, but we're going to get that sorted out. The second good thing that has happened today is um, I got a new microphone for my laptop. So now you should be able to hear me very clearly. And um, I really think these video walkthroughs can be very helpful. Um, I'll try to go uh, fairly slow without talking too much um, so that y'all can get a good idea of how you can use both Excel and use SPSS um, to do your work. Um, so we left off today uh, not being able to get a histogram done, and that was my fault. Um, I got a little bit mixed up and the uh, computer in our classroom has a different version of Excel than what I have on my computer. Anyway, lots of excuses. Bottom line is I'm going to show you how to do it correctly now. There's actually two ways that we can do histograms in Excel. Uh, I'm going to show you probably the easiest way to do it with your homework first, and then I'll show you the other way which um, works as well. So the first way we can use Excel to build a histogram is to put the raw data values for a variable of interest into some cells. And what I mean by that is to take um, the values for each of the members of our sample and put them into cells. Uh, so if we looked at the example from class today, and I'll read it again for you, um, it says, suppose a small college is interested in increasing participation in campus activities. A random sample of students was asked to check events that they attended on a checklist for the previous term. The results for the number of events attended were as follows, and follows a list of the number of events that students attended. So we know our variable is number of events attended. So I'm going to put that in the cell. And remember we have a nice trick if you hover your cursor over the cell line until it changes into the line with the arrows. You double click and it'll expand the cell. So earlier we put down um, the frequencies of each value, but what I'm going to do instead is put the raw value straight out of the book, and we can actually develop a histogram from this. So we've got 2, 2, 4, 8, 5, 2, 3, 1, 6, 5, 4, 12, one, four, two, seven, six, three, two, four, seven, four, two, three. That concludes tonight's lottery numbers. Just kidding. So anyway, once we've got the raw number, then we want to develop a histogram using the data data analysis tool. Now remember, if this isn't showing up in your version of Excel, go to the File button, or there might be a Home button up here instead. So go to the File button, select Options or Excel Options if that's what you have. Go to Add-ins, and then click on the Analysis Tool Pack and Analysis Tool Pack VBA. Click Go and then make sure that these two boxes are checked, one for Analysis Tool Pack, the other for Analysis Tool Pack VBA. All right, with that all done, we should be ready to go. So we're on our Data tab, we click Data Analysis, and we look for Histogram. Okay, and here's where we went wrong last time. So our input range is going to be the range of values that we got um, for our variable of interest. So that's going to be the raw values for each of the students that was asked about the number of events they attended. So I'm going to click that button and it's going to let me select all the values. And I want to actually drag click all of the values. The event. Notice I didn't grab the variable label. I don't really have to do that. Um, I could and then I could click labels and it would do and it would handle that but just just get the values um, the other thing that I did not do was click chart output so 
we check that and then click OK. It'll create a new sheet and a histogram. But this doesn't look like a very good histogram. The bars aren't next to each other and it's just kind of categorized everybody into um, random categories. So that's not good. So let's right click that sheet and delete it. Okay. So the other thing I have to do is define the bins or the intervals, right? So this is where we actually define the number, the categories of this variable. So if you remember, we had a range of 1 to 12. I'm going to start off at 0. Don't ask me why you have to start off at 0. Just do it. And I click, put in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay? And you can put this anywhere to the right of your data, but just put it somewhere where your data is not and where you can easily find it. So now we click data analysis, select histogram, and our input range is still selected. Now we're going to set our bin range, which is going to tell us the number numbers of the bar, the range of bars to actually put in to our histogram. So if we click that, we'll select these bins we just made. Okay. Still have a chart output. Click OK. And lo and behold, we kind of have a histogram. But still got some work to do. Okay. So let's 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 see what all we're we're not we don't have right here. Um well go to the design first and you're gonna need to change the design of this histogram to match a histogram so it's it's doing it's cur basically creating a bar chart from raw data for you but then it's displaying as a as a as a regular old bar chart we don't want that we want an actual histogram so I'm gonna go down to through my chart layouts till I find something that looks like a histogram with the bars next to each other and I'm gonna click that now that looks a lot more like it however um, still not perfect so first things I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna resize this there we go now I'm gonna change this label to the actual name of our variable say number of events attended there that's nice and then I'm gonna click these bars and I'm gonna make them actually look like something we can read so when I go I can click here any of the bars if you click it once it'll select all of them go to format I'm gonna go shape fill and fill it with no color or white and then I'm going to select shape outline and fill it with black. So now we have a histogram that actually looks like a histogram. And we can see that we have a nice distribution of people between people between 1 and 8, right? And then we have this one guy out here who went to 12 events. So that's the basic way to make a histogram in Excel, okay? You might have to watch this a couple of times to get it right, but that's what you want to do to make a histogram. Uh, using the data analysis function. You can also uh, just use the bar chart uh, method to do this. And the, the bit of work you're going to have to do yourself there is you're going to actually have to calculate the frequencies for number of events attended. So we're kind of fortunate that it did that for us over here. Um, but let's, let's do it that the, the hard way this time. So we had six people who went two times we had two people who went to events one time and we had how many people that went three times we had three people and you can see how this would get old really quick so actually I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste these frequencies from here okay so <clears throat> now 
I want I'm gonna want to insert a column chart and select the basic column chart and it's not going to have any data in it that's okay I'm gonna click the select data button under the chart tools and I'm going to um, chart the data range and see what happens when you do this okay alright that's that's no good okay that's no good we don't like that so let's remove remove alright so let's try this again alright there's our actual data now we need to do change our axis labels and that's going to be the number of events actually attended okay so now everything's labeled correctly everything's in its place might have to fix this So through a little trial and error, we can get the number of events tended right. All right, so there's one main reason I'm showing you um, the hard way, basically, to do a histogram, and that's to show that even though using the and data analysis tool is a little bit cumbersome, it's much easier than uh, having to develop the chart from scratch yourself. Um, as you can see from the amount of time it's taking me to do this. All right? But it can be done. Okay? So that's two ways that you can generate a bar chart in Excel. Now I'm going to show you how to do this in SPSS and it's actually a lot easier. So in SPSS the first thing we would have to do is define a variable so we're going to click on variable view and you can't put a character like this as the first character of a variable it just doesn't work so I'm going to just type in events as a name and the label I'll click number of events attended there we go I'll say that it's a scale measure and then we can start entering some data. Um, actually, I want to knock the number of decimals down too. Okay, so now we go to our data view and we have a ready-made column for us to enter our data. So we'll do this again exactly the same way we did it last time. Eight, nine, Okay, so now that we've done that, we've entered our data, to make a histogram, all we have to do is click graph, and we can either use chart builder or legacy dialogs. Um, I'm gonna try using legacy dialogs. We click histogram, and we only have one variable to choose from, and it's number of events attended, so we'll click number of events attended, click this button to move it over into the variable, um, there's this option to display a normal curve. We're not really going to be worried about that until another chapter or so. We can add titles, which is nice. So, click title. I can say number, number of events attended by college students. Okay. And if I had more information, I could I could do all that. So now that I've done all that, all I have to do is click OK. And it'll take a second and put out a graph for me. So it's it's still processing. There we go. See? 
Easy peasy, done. Now I can edit this chart a couple of different ways. If I double click it, it'll let me edit it. Um, and there's a whole bunch of options for you to do uh, there. We're not going to deal with those for the moment, though. We're just going to go ahead and um, stick with what we've got in this chart. So SPSS is, is actually, I think, a little bit easier to do this with. And it produces um, a nice graph that we can just right click, copy, and then paste into um, a Word document or anything we want to do. So that's it for how to make some hi mix histograms. Uh, I hope that's helpful. Um, I recommend using either the data analysis tool in Excel or using SPSS to construct hi histograms for your homework. I'm fine with you doing either one. Just make sure to title your graphs. Um, and that's it. Thank you.